Guys, we're going to go ahead and get started with our tech talk today. Our topic is Team Center Gateway for Enterprise Application. Now, our presenter today is Rannick, who is actually in our Cincinnati uh, office. He is a systems engineer here at Prolim over a year of experience, and he really focuses on crafting customized team center solutions to meet unique business needs. Now, sometimes that is just ensuring the smooth integration of CAD tools with team center. And then of course, in his role, he also acts as the main contact for Team Center Support, where he creates bespoke Team Center solutions, as well as configuring CAD integrations and resolving any kind of Team Center related issues. So thank you so much for joining us, Renick, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'll start my presentation, so if you have any questions, you can put it in chats or note it down. Uh, we'll have a question and answer session after the presentation and I'll address all of those after. So let me share my screen. And Hello everyone, my name is Rana Kranthava and I'm a system engineer here at Prolim. Today we'll go over Team Center Gateway for Enterprise application. Here is the agenda for today's webinar. We'll see how we can transfer items and bombs to the ERP system. You'll also see the live data view of ERP product and bomb within Team Center itself. Then we'll see how we can query the ERP system and import items into Team Center. We'll use the ERP system to generate Team Center item IDs and also verify that the Team Center item ID and ERP ID is the same. Lastly, we'll go over the Team Center Gateway admin UI. Uh, which is used for monitoring uh, all the transactions between the ERP system and Team Center. Let us dive into a live demonstration of Team Center Gateway for enterprise applications. So, for the T4 year demo today, I'll be using Office as the ERP system to show how we can transfer data from Team Center over to the ERP system using T4 year. So on my team center here, I have a machine housing for drill open. It is an assembly which has three parts within it. The housing left panel, the housing right panel, and eight screws. First, we'll see how we can transfer one single item over to the ERP system. I have some properties specific to this housing left panel. For example, ID, revision, name, description and we'll see how we can transfer over these properties to the ERP system. I also have the office information, which is the office product ID and office transfer details. Right now it is empty, which means that there's no product in the ERP system for housing left panel. If I go over to the office products tab, it'll, I'll have a message saying that ID not specified, which means is not present in the office ERP system. And this office product tab is a live data view of the attributes within the ERP system. Let us take a look at how we can transfer the specific item provision to the ERP system. For this, I'll be using a simple workflow, which is a one-step workflow. And once it's submitted and completed, we'll see information updated within Team Center. Now I have the Office product ID and transfer details. If I go over to the Office products tab, I'll see all the attributes that are present within the ERP system. And this is the live data view of these attributes. Let us take a look at this specific part within the ERP system itself. So I have that blue button to open the specific part in the ERP system. Over here, I have the internal name, the product name, comments, and product type. The internal name is concatenation of the item ID and the item name itself. Uh, I have the product name here, which is the item name again. The comments are mapped to the description of the item revision. So we talked about how 
This is the live data view of the attributes within the ERP system. For example, I have the product type here to finish set to finish goods. If I update this product type from finished goods to, for example, digital goods and update the product, I'll see these changes reflected within my team center uh, product office product data view. So right now I have the digital goods here. So any changes th that are made in the ERP system can be seen in real time within Team Center. Let us take a look at how we can transfer the entire POM over to the ERP system. But first I'll send rest of the parts itself to the ERP system before uh, transferring the bomb to office. I'll use the same workflow for this. And this should submit and be completed. And now let us transfer over the bomb to the ERP system. I'll be using a similar workflow that says product association transfer. And once this is completed, we will see the bomb created in the ERP system. So now that I have transferred over to the machine housing assembly to the ERP system, I can see that the machine housing has been created, created in the office ERP. If I go over to the product association tab, I'll see the bomb that is present in the ERP system. We have the component data section here. These are the IDs for those specific parts in the ERP system and you have the position number, quantity, and other details. Let us take a look at the bomb in the ERP system. Again, the internal name, the product name, comments have been copied over from Team Center to Office. We have associations tab here that will show me the bomb. So we have the left housing panel, right housing panel, and screws. You've got the sequence number copied from Team Center and the quantity also. For example, if I edit one of these associations and put in a through date, for example, 23rd March, and then let's try to add some other properties as well here. For example, reason we'll add, we'll add the instructions as well for this and we will update this let's take another example over here for eight screws we'll put the through date to for example april 19th and then update this association now if i go over go back to my team center and go over to the product association tab, I'll see the information updated within Team Center. So again, this is a, a real-time view of the bomb that is present in the ERP system. So this is how we can transfer single items or assembly from uh, Team Center to the ERP system using T4EA. Next on our agenda list, we have how we can query the ERP system and import those items within our team center. So there might be instances where a product is present in your ERP system, but not in your team center. In that case, we can use the advanced searches within Team Center to query the ERP system and find that specific part within the ERP system and import it to Team Center. In this example, I have a 526 part. It is a plastic head cap and it's present in my ERP system, but not in my Team Center. If I search for this part within Team Center, I'll not find it. In order to import this part to Team Center, I can use the import object to Team Center command. 
So once this is initiated, the import will the import process will start and it will import that specific product to my team center and all the properties will be carried over from the ERP system to my team center. An item will be created for this plastic head cap. We also have properties, for example, internal name and product name we can do a search on. If I do a search on a hundred part number, I'll, re I'll receive many more results for uh, the products that are present in the ERP system. Now, going back to my example for the 526 part, so now that the in import has been completed, if I search for this plastic head cap, I receive the result within my team center. Now you can see that I can search for this plastic head cap and it's available within my team center. Let's open this plastic head cap and see what are the properties within here. So we have the office information for the office product and the transfer details, the description name uh, were carried from the ERP system uh, to my team center. If I take a look at the office products tab, I'll have the same details here. Next, we will see how we can use the ERP system to generate uh, team center item IDs and, we'll, and we will verify those team center item IDs in the ERP as well. So to generate the team center IDs from the ERP system, I will be creating a fixed asset item type in my team center. Once I click on this fixed asset item type, it is going to make a call to the ERP system and it will look for the next available item ID uh, in the ERP system. So right now, the next available ID is 10021 in the ERP system. That's why we have that here. Once I create this part, coupling part, uh, we'll see how both these IDs in my team center and the ERP system are the same. So again, we have the ID as 10021 here. You have the other details here. If I go over to the fixed asset tab, this is the live DRV from the ERP system. And it'll here have the same ID as my team center ID, um, but the name says reserved by team center. If I go over to the ERP system, I'll see the same details here. We have the same ID here and the name says reserved by team center. So right now we have this uh, ID created in the ERP system, but all the details are not transferred over to the ERP system. It has, the ID has been reserved for the coupling part. To send all the details over to the ERP system, I'll use a similar workflow template. And once this is submitted, we'll see how all the details are transferred over to the fixed asset in the ERP system. So now you can see we have the names transferred and we have the last modification date and time here. I'll go over to the ERP system. I'll see the same details here. So this is how we can uh, generate team center IDs from the ERP system and verify they both are same in the team center as well as your ERP system. Next, we will see how we can monitor the integration between team center and the ERP system using the admin UI for the active integration gateway. So this is the administrative interface to monitor the integration between Team Center and the ERP system. Right now I'm at the Team Center Gateway. This is the service statistics page. We have the system information, the calls, and the log messages information here. For example, uptime means, means the last time the service was restarted, the number of commands within the pool, the memory usage, the number of calls made, and the failed calls. We also have whether it was an HTTP call or a RPC call. And we can see information related to log messages as well. In the process list, we have all the processes that are running for the integration. Uh, we have three processes listed here. These are similar to the processes that you can see in the task manager in the Windows operating system. You also have an option to kill these processes by using the stop process command. 
in the TCP connection, you can see all the connections that are made by the integration. And these could be either opened or closed. It, they could be either previously or oh, previously running or they could be the ones that are currently still open. In the command history tab, you can see all the commands that are run by the integration. You can see more information about these commands by using the show details on the last column here. This will show you all the information related to the, related to the command. Now, to, uh, we can use the log file transactions to view all the log files related to all the transactions that were made for the integration. Right now, I have 60 successful uh, transactions, three failed and one unknown. This is a drill down report. And this, I can see there are 40 products that are transferred and 12 bombs. There are six fixed assets. This is the one where we used the ERP to generate the item ID for Team Center. And there's one where we did the import of an object into Team Center from ERP. If I drill down further, I can see all the log files for the products that are transferred to the ERP system. We have option to search for specific log files for a certain object that was transferred. There's also filters we can use. For example, you can use the modification date and other attributes here as well to filter for specific log files. If I pick an example of this 000027 bolt part, we can see the log files for uh, the transaction here. There are session files, the workflow files, and the attributes. In the attributes, you can see the state was successful, the object itself, what object it was, for example, here's the bolt, object type is item revision, and when this transaction was created and completed, and also the user who submitted the, uh, that object to the workflow for transferring it over to the ERP system. There's also options for selecting multiple uh, log files and comparing them uh, in, a, in, a, in a row column manner here. There's also option to click, check this, change the to detailed view, this will again bring you back to the detailed view of that specific log file. And you can traverse through these three uh, log files and uh, compare them. For example, if the integration crashes, you can use, uh, you can download the track uh, stack traces and diagnose the problem. You can restart the services from here. Um, the interface all also has a dashboard where you can see reports for um, job loads, uh, job switches, all the commands and threads that are in action right now, uh, the system statuses, the calls, the memory usage. You can also see the active agent, job agents, uh, pending and lost agents, and the system load. There's also options to change the theme of uh, the interface from light to dark. You can change the language here. There's also a help option that you can use for traversing through this admin interface for monitoring the integration between Team Center and Team Center and ERP. With this, we will conclude today uh, for the webinar. Uh, we've covered all the topics in the agenda today. We saw how we can transfer an item to the ERP. We saw the live data view of the ERP product in Team Center. Then we saw how we can transfer BOM to the ERP system. We also queried the ERP system and ported the items into Team Center from ERP. Uh, we used the ERP to generate uh, Team Center IDs and verified that those two IDs were same in Team Center as well as in the ERP. And lastly, we saw the admin UI for Team Center Gateway where you can monitor um, all the transactions between Team Center and the ERP system. So with this, uh, I'll end the webinar today. Thank you for attending the webinar.